हेलो एवरीवन एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द कैपिटल असेट प्राइजिंग मॉडल दैट इज द सी ए पी एम मॉडल एंड दिस इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंटरेस्टिंग वीडियो यू विल एवर फाइंड बट बिफोर डिस्कसिंग सी ए पी एम लेट्स फर्स्ट डिस्कस द सिस्टमैटिक रिस्क वर्सेस द अनसिस्टमैटिक रिस्क now this unsystematic risk can be eliminated can be completely eliminated you can find another video about the systematic and unsystematic risk in detail if you want to understand both these terms now what is unsystematic risk that is due to the micro factors that can be eliminated how it can be eliminated that we learned in modern portfolio theory that is mpt by combining two assets that move in the opposite direction that is when one rises the other falls when other falls the other rises that means they have the correlation now what was r that is this correlation it was the linear relationship between two variables that is the tendency of falling on a straight line you can check out this video also now when this r that is correlation relationship between two variables is less than 1 then this risk unsystematic risk can be eliminated how it eliminates by combining two stocks with negative correlation that is one rise and there fall one fall other rises and this concept is known as benefit of diversification now this concept we learned in the modern portfolio theory that was given by harry markowitz in 1952 now this man wants to invest money so to get return he is also risk averse he is concerned about the risk also but do you think now this risk that is eliminated is of his concern no so this risk is no more of concern for any investor so what we are concerned is about the systematic risk the other name is the market risk now let's first discuss in brief that what we learned in modern portfolio theory that is hero harry markowitz so in modern portfolio theory we were combining two stocks that is p and c c and d a and d two or more stocks that were having negative correlation to eliminate the risk so that was the modern portfolio theory that provided us with the introduction of the benefit of diversification but when i talk about the capm it is the updated version it compares the stock with the market economy market returns so a stock a security a market return security b market return security c market return so it is not comparing a stock it is comparing a stock with the market return so it is that required rate of return which a person earns by taking into consideration the market risk now what is this market risk this is the systematic risk which is dependent upon macro factors that may be economic that may be social that may be political that are uncontrollable so these uncontrollable factors risk called as systematic risk is the concern for an investor and this capm model tells us that the return you are getting from your investment is after considering the systematic the uncontrollable risk now let's move further and discuss about what is this market risk and how it is calculated in capm model so this market risk is given by the term beta now what is beta so beta you just need to remember the one tag line for beta 
that is it is the sensitivity sensitivity of a stock that may be a b c d in respect in respect to the market economy now the second question that arises related to beta is how to calculate this sensitivity of a stock in respect to the economy so the formula is change in a stock return that is for example the stock return of security a rises from 10 to 15 percent so five percent the whole divided by change in the market economy or the market return so market return rises by 10 to 15 percent so five percent divided by five percent that is the beta is equal to one this beta denotes the market risk market risk the systematic risk the systematic that is the uncontrollable risk now what is the meaning of this economy now what happens the act actual market economy or market index is not available so beta is what it is the comparison it is the you can say a relationship is established between the stock and the market economy using this beta so we use a proxy a proxy market or a well established benchmark index now what this benchmark index may be it is the index benchmark index of various countries depending on the security of which country we are comparing it may be of america snp it may be shanghai it may be nestec it may be tokyo or it may be the sensex or nifty of india so the economy here refers to the benchmark index now the most important concept of CAPM is SML that stands for security market line so what is this it gives us basically the graphical presentation the graphical presentation to calculate the assets price now it is the price of an asset or the return of a security is calculated by using the sml equation which is re now what is re that is the required rate of return what i want from my money to give to yield rf that is the risk free rate of return that is to invest in government securities treasury bonds there is no risk it is totally risk free that I will get this percentage at any cost plus beta we already discussed it is the market sensitivity of a stock in respect to market and RM minus RF we will discuss later on. Now the other way of denoting this equation is ER is equal to RF plus beta RM minus RF. So RE that is required rate gets replaced by the expected rate of return. Now why it is so? Because CAPM is an equilibrium model. Equilibrium model means IV0 that is the is equal to P0. So you need to remember that whether it is RE or it is ER, it is same because this is an equilibrium model. For more details, you can see the assumptions of CAPM in that you will find this thing in detail. And what is this ER? That is the expected rate of return. What I expect from a security to yield. Now what is this beta multiplied by rm minus rf so what is rm now this rm is the return from the market minus risk free rate of return and then we are multiplying it with beta why what is the reason for example for example the market return is 15 percent now if i am investing in market i would have got 15 percent directly 
and the risk free rate is 8% that is the government bond treasury bills etc sorry for that so here you will see that i am taking risk i am investing in the stock market or anything and i am taking risk so for this risk what is the additional compensation or additional return or what is the market risk premium what is the premium due to this market risk so here it is seven percent so this seven percent that is 15 minus 8 is the compensation compensation for what compensation for bearing the risk for bearing one beta in this case now this can be 14 also that is 2 beta it can be 21 also that is 3 beta so it depends on the investor to investor that what level of risk he is going to you can say he is interested or he is going to pursue that so that is rm minus rf multiplied by beta also known as market risk premium now the graphical presentation of SML. Now on the y-axis you will find the required rate of return and on x-axis it is the beta that is the risk. Now here you will see that this line that is the security market line and this is the point RF that is the return you are getting without taking any risk. So this is the risk there is no risk because you may invest this amount in government bonds or treasury bills. So only return, no risk in RF. Now this is a point where beta is equals to 1. And this slope that is due to this market risk premium that is the RM minus RF. So this is the presentation, graphical presentation of SML. Now this graphical presentation of SML helps us in finding finding what that whether we should buy a security hold a security or sell a security now how it helps so for example there is any security or any point lying above the security market line so what it tells me that this is undervalued how it is undervalued because my expectations are higher. I have expected a higher return, but CAPM return is lesser. So it is undervalued in the market right now. So I must buy that security. And when it will be overvalued, when it is below the security market line. Now below the security market line what it means for example the expected return is less than the security CAPM model that we have calculated. So when it is over the SML that is undervalued that gives an investor that you should buy this security and when it is under the SML that is it is overvalued that means you should sell the security now i know that we have now why this model is known as capital asset pricing model because it helps in the pricing of an asset it helps in the comparison comparing the assets return how now this is the required rate of return or the expected rate of return that we calculated using the CAPM model that is RE is equals to RF plus market risk premium that the equation of SML. So this RE or ER will be used to discount the cash flows, discount the cash flows that is the future cash flows from an asset. And this cash flows will give us the CAPM that is the required or the expected asset price. And this asset price then can be compared, compared with the asset price. You can say this required or the expected CAPM price will then be compared with the estimated price. So it helps in the comparison and if 
estimated that is what we have estimated is higher than re that is as per capm model the price is less so again what it meant it means that it is above the sml that means it is undervalued and when it is higher it means overvalued so what we have learned in capm that it provides it gives us the required rate of return or the expected rate of return which is equal to rf that is the risk free rate of return plus beta that is the market sensitivity multiplied by rm minus rf and this capital asset pricing model helps in comparing the asset required price or the you can see the expected price with the estimated price so it helps in comparing the asset pricing so this was all about capm model i hope you enjoyed watching this video thank you